Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando. That's Corey. And today we're doing 1995's Crimson Tide. Before we get started, if you want to follow me or Corey on Twitter, it's a blast. You can follow mm. me at Junior D's. You can follow Corey at Corey underscore Idol. Come Yay. and not answer a question I ask every day. <laughs> Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? It's life, man. What are you going to do? Is, it is life. You yeah. know what? You know what? Actually, it's reaffirming that nobody gives a shit. And I appreciate that. Just yeah. having that having that every day. It's like, oh, good. My opinion doesn't mean anything. I like sending my opinion into the deep, dark void. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Uh, but let's get into this cast of Crimson Tide because this is a Deep cast, just FYI. Uh, yeah. This film stars Gene Hackman as Ramsey, Denzel Washington as Commander Ron Hunter, Vigo Mortensen as Weps, James Gandolfini as Lieutenant Bobby Doherty, with appearances by Rocky Carroll, Lilo Brancato in a role other than Cologero, Steve Zahn, and Ricky Schroeder, the man, the myth, the guy who supports the trucker rallies. Look, why is it that when you take a certain stance on things, you just have to, like, let yourself completely go? Like, why can't you support the truckers? And I don't know, trim your fucking beard and take a shower. <laughs> Let's get into this movie, man. Crimson Tide. Um... I remember when this movie came out, mm -hmm. I remember loving the movie and, and mm -hmm. nothing has really changed. This is still a good movie. Tons of good acting. Oh, uh, yeah. But this, this movie opens and it's kind of apropos for, you know, things that are going on God. right now. It, it, Yo. it take, is it not? Like, Yo, it was scary. Like I talked, I talked to you a lot offline about how, prophetic george carlin seems in a lot of his uh st old stand-up bits yeah uh with everything that's happening now this movie holy shit did they call it yeah just, just remove the rebel leader for <laughs> real president and yeah. it's pretty much the movie no, absolutely. So this movie opens with CNN reporting on a war popping off in eastern Russia. A rebel force is taking over nuclear missile sites, and they threaten to launch the nukes at the U.S. if they can get the codes from the Russian government. Yeah. So we see Commander Ron Hunter. He's brought in to interview with Captain Ramsey of the Alabama submarine. Ramsey then hires Hunter to be his executive officer on the sub. A couple of things, just, just to start off. So in this, in this interview, um, there's, there's a whole thing about Denzel's character being like from graduating from Harvard. A year at, excuse me, Harvard. Which was bullshit um, because he's not the one that brought it up. Yes. If that if he was really from Harvard, that scene would have been Gene Hackman going, uh, so you're from Annapolis and and then Denzel immediately going, Harvard, Harvard, I'm from fucking Harvard too. <laughs> exactly. So that was the one because the, the Harvard thing, like, oh, you're a philosophizer. Like, like that whole thing comes up there. And immediately um, hates him. Yeah, Just exactly. immediately has that uh disdain for him because yep. It's not a white or black thing. It's just a different difference in philosophies. Yeah, exactly. Because and you find out Gene Hackman is not a part of a thinking man's army. He's a take your orders and fucking do it. Yeah, period. exactly. So there, there's that. And then we, we get introduced to his dog here. I got a problem with this, and I'm going to do my first don't do that of the day. Hi, military people. If you're on a submarine... It's an enclosed space. There's a few issues that I had with this movie, um, and, and it may be a thing. I've never been on a sub. Not military, don't know anything about it. However, they're smoking cigarettes and cigars, and I don't know what the filtration system on those things are, but don't do that. And also, don't bring your motherfucking dog 
Like, all I kept thinking about what distracted me in this movie was the dog's got to eat and shit and piss. And we see a scene of the dog actually taking a leak on the sub, which, fine, it's urine. Who cares? Where's this dog shitting? Like, yeah, have you ever tried to clean shit off a grate? Because everything <laughs> on this is great. There is no solid floor. Yes. So don't any, any captains of submarines out there, don't bring your dogs on a goddamn sub for 65 days. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and take a different approach and go, Hi, filmmakers. Uncle Corey here. Don't use a dog as comic relief just for the sake of it. This movie did not require it. It was no. not necessary. And having it in here almost made it stupid. Not the entire movie, but just the scenes with the dog yeah. are so dumb. And I'm, I'm fucking all about the dogs. I love them. But at the same time... We know, Corey. You, you need to keep them the fuck out of here in this fucking movie. They were not necessary. Yeah, the, and it's only there for comic relief. It really is. It's it's growling at certain crew members. Exactly. It's, Which I got pro Every time the dog shows up, I got a problem with. Yeah. No, same. Same. Hunter and his buddy, Lieutenant Weps, are called up for duty. They leave immediately for the Alabama. And at an officer's dinner, like within the first day or two on the sub, Ramsey and the crew discuss the threat of nuclear war. Ramsey wants to know what Hunter thinks because he's the philosophizer on the sub and the Harvard grad. And Ramsey's just poking the bear here at, at, at dinner. Oh. And so he can basically call him soft in front of the other officers. Like, yeah, that's, this is. This is flexing nuts and nothing yeah. more than that. And making yeah. sure uh, at the same time, Hunter knows his place, which again, it comes off to like us. It's just like, oh, you're a fucking dick. Yeah. But it, in, in Gene Hackman's character's world, he's so old school that that's how it was in the military then. Yeah. I'm in charge. You're new. You need to you need to know who's the boss. It's like when a new guy took over back at work, like in those days, they would just pick a guy to fire at random to make sure everybody understood who was in charge. Yeah. While on patrol in the Alabama, a fire breaks out in the galley and Hunter, while running laps on the sub, rushes in to help put out said fire. Meanwhile, Ramsey decides to order a missile launch drill during this whole fire deal. Which I agree with. I'll be honest. I agree with it as well. His his reasoning is totally yeah. sound. Spot on. And I think the the uh, guy that has a heart attack after the fire, again, I don't think that's that's not on the captain. He, I agree with him. Yeah, yeah, the fire the fire may have helped kill him, but also he had medical attention there while the drill was going on. Exactly. So and it's not really a factor. And Denzel trying to push that blame on Gene Hackman here. Yeah. In the next couple scenes, it's fucking bullshit. Yeah, and, and Hunter and Ramsey kind of get into it. Hunter disagrees with running the drill during slash right after the fire. He voices his concern with Ramsey. Ramsey dismisses him. And then he calls Hunter into his cabin to reprimand him for interrupting the drill. And, and like you said, I, I kind of agree with his with his take here because Ramsey tells Hunter that confusion aboard a submarine is something to be taken advantage of. Like everything's yeah. not going to be under perfect circumstances when we're, you know, doing these things. So he took advantage of a situation that was a real time situation. So yes, that old school thinking and that kind of thing, like totally agree with that. What'd you think, son? I was just some crazy old coot putting everyone in harm's way as I yelled, yeehaw! I also agree with the fact that he told them, you know, I don't mind you questioning my orders. I don't mind you questioning or doubting what I'm saying. Yes. Don't fucking do it in front of other people, which we have talked yes. about constantly yep. on this show, uh, mainly with like your partner or your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever. Yeah. But this is this is well, even more so like if if you're in a military style situation where you just have that hierarchy 
you have to follow that hierarchy. Absolutely. And and, and I really, I, I like Denzel's character in this movie, mm-hmm. except for this. When I see something I don't like, I'm going to say it in front of everybody rather than pull you aside and go, hey, I think, I don't think what you did here was right. Like announcing it in front of everybody is, is the only thing that I hated about his character in this movie. Yeah, he seems up until the end, uh, uh, he seems incapable of eating crow. Yeah. And it's like, I get that. But at the same time, how did you make it through basic training? <laughs> yes. Well, the Alabama then receives an emergency action message that the rebels are very close to breaking the codes for launching the nukes, and they're raised to DEFCON 3. And we've learned what DEFCON 3 is from war games. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> we actually had a nice little little LED light display to let us know that shit's getting serious. Yeah, so. I really could have used that in this one. Because if it wasn't for <laughs> war games, I would have been scratching my head. <laughs> so then there's a fight between two crew members at like, I don't know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, one of the meals. And Hunter breaks it up. Mm-hmm. Hunter then goes to report it to Ramsey, says the crew's morale may be a little bit low. And then Ramsey then announces to the crew over the boat's PA system that infighting will not be tolerated. If they don't want to be there, then they could just get off the sub. This is such a dick move on Gene Hackman's oh. part. Like, And I, I'll be honest, up, up to this point, again, with the interactions they've had, I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. This is a move I would do just because it's like, why are you constantly pushing back on me? Yes. I, like Gene Hackman, again, is like, hey, I think the uh, like unannounced, like Denzel didn't come to him. He's like, hey, man, I saw this fight. And he's like, oh, we got to kick him in the ass. He's just having a conversation. It's like, hey, you know, I kind of noticed this. I think the guys need a bit of a kick in the ass. You can't give him one. Yeah. You're like, no. I actually think, like, f- go fuck yourself, Harvard. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> stick it up your ass. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you can't fucking bend on one thing, even an idle conversation like, hey, I think these guys need a kick in the ass. Yes, sir, they do. Any recommendations? Eh, just saying. You know what I mean? That's where that fucking conversation goes. It's not gonna... Yeah. You don't have to fight every fight. You seem to have the pulse of the men. This it's this insane. movie did this movie did a really good job of flip flopping me on who I liked mm. and who I didn't like. Like it the the writing was really good in this, and I was yep. back and forth throughout this movie. Then the the crew detects an enemy sub. They try to evade it. They dive deeper. Another EAM comes in, ordering the Alabama to launch their nukes. And this is where the whole crux of the goddamn movie comes in. Yes. <laughs> and as they're diving deeper, they get another EAM about the nukes that's incomplete because they're too deep to receive the full message and it cuts out. Hunter requests that the sub's buoy be launched to receive the EAM. The buoy winch fails, causes noise, alerting the enemy sub. The enemy sub attacks with torpedoes. The Alabama evades the torpedoes, one of which explodes, and it causes severe damage to the buoy cable, and the buoy goes bye-bye. At the same time, apparently obliterating a radio. Dude, Everything else is perfectly fine, (laughs) except for the one fucking piece of equipment they absolutely have to have. It just shatters into a thousand fucking pieces. This is the one thing that boggled my mind. I'm like, okay, the explosion happens like close to the Alabama. Okay, the buoy cable breaks. The buoy goes bye-bye. Cool, whatever. It is what it is. But then they're like, you know, Kologero from freaking Bronxdale is like, dad, the goddamn radio doesn't work. Well, you need to fix it, but I'm going to try. And they're literally unscrewing every rack to this fucking thing, trying to get the the radio back up and running and, and this whole communication system back up and running. And I was like, I just didn't get that. Like, 
listen, I understand electronics enough to know how to broadcast a show onto YouTube. That's about the extent of my knowledge. But this seemed a little fishy to me. <laughs> Just, yeah, man. It 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 took it took less time to actually invent the radio <laughs> than it did for Collageno to fucking build the goddamn thing. I just I don't I don't understand why that was the I get it you had to have the problem and the radio down and da 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 da. Cool. Yeah. Totally get it. I don't understand why it was so badly damaged. No, that I didn't like, get that either. Like this dude's putting so many fucking like different like m- fucking microchips and yeah. like processors into this fucking. He's it's changing like, out motherboards. Yeah, like what are you doing? <laughs> this was this was ninety nine when you used to have to call Dell to build a computer for you. <laughs> Ramsey and Hunter then get into this whole thing about the EAM and it's an incomplete message. Ramsey's on the side of we have our our marching orders. We need to get ready to launch these nukes. Hunter's like, we need to get this next EAM. It could be, you know, don't launch the nukes, yada, yada. So they get into this whole argument here. This is really where the protagonist and antagonist switch, because now Denzel is on the side of right. Whereas Gene Hackman clearly becomes the bad guy in this movie. But at the same time, neither of them change a single thing about who they are. Yeah. I mean that it's just brilliant writing. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And so Ramsey intends to continue with the launch of his missiles. Hunter disagrees and then Hunter and Ramsey argue about the launch, and Hunter then starts to cite Navy regulations and the fact that Ramsey's order must be repeated for it to stand, and he's not agreeing with his order. Ramsey tries to order Hunter away. Hunter orders Ramsey to be arrested and locked in his cabin. The chief of the boat agrees with Hunter because he's actually friends with Ramsey. Yes. But he's agreeing with, protocol yeah all of these all of these officers by and large have served with ramsey multiple times before hunter's the only new guy and they're all following the ones that do stick with hunter are following protocol and back in the day this kind of used to bug me because as we said gene hackman nothing switches about his character he's a military man he has his orders he said it's what it is well he's now got regulations And before, that used to bother me that he's just like, eh, fuck it, I'm replacing you as the XO then. And he's like, you can't do that. And he's like, fucking arrest him. And like starts losing his mind. Yeah. It's like, well, that starts to deviate a little bit. Now I kind of see it, though, as more of like, you're a warrior. And you have never really had a war. Yeah. Right? You've You've had different operations. You've had different missions, et cetera, et cetera. But you've never actually been battle tested so to speak and now you actually do have a target you have the orders to do your job for the first time the actual purpose of you being there and you're just not going to be shaken from the fact that you're going to do the fucking job now yes if you really start thinking about this movie now like this whole like scenario from here on out it breaks your brain fucking terrifying yeah no it really breaks your brain it, it if does. you think if you think about it, it really, really does because uh, it's Jason easy. Robards at the end sums it up when he says, "You're both right and you're both wrong." Yeah. The rest of this movie is two guys being right and wrong at the exact same time. Yes, Hunter then assumes command, informs the crew that they're they're still on patrol. They're, they'll try to reestablish communications to verify the EAM. The enemy sub then reappears and attacks. They launch torpedoes again. The Alabama avoids being hit. They launch two more torpedoes, which destroy the enemy sub. But a torpedo was launched by the enemy sub before it was destroyed and explodes close to the Alabama. The bilge bay takes on water. The men in the bilge bay drown when Hunter orders the bilge bay to be sealed. Dude, this scene... 
particularly when the guy jacks the wrench the last time. Yeah. And the whole fucking and, sprocket and, pops off and smacks it. Dude, I was sitting there watching this, just going like, is this the movie? Is this the movie where that happens? Yeah. And it happened. And I still went, oh! Yeah, dude. It's rough, dude. And you, I actually, like, this is probably the last time you actually do have sympathy for Rick Schroeder in life because him having to follow those orders yes. is just devastating. Yeah, no, it's the, the whole scene, and I'll venture to say this whole movie is it, it, it is emotional. It took it, it, it oh. took uh, it took a lot out of me, it, but by the end of it, and they make you feel it. Like this scene makes mm. you feel it. You know what I and, mean? Like you're in it. And this is another deep scene because you're you know, if you don't follow this order to murder your friends, yes, and possibly the people that have worked for you for a very long time, yep. if you don't allow them to die, everybody dies. Yes. That's fuck, and it's not even like your decision. It's somebody else telling you you have to do this. Exactly. The Alabama here is sinking quickly. It's approaching a depth of almost nineteen hundred feet, where they're in danger of the pressure crushing the entire hull. And I love the sounds from the outside of yeah. the metal creaking and bending. And yeah. I wish this was my one complaint because they when they do get the engine turned over. Yep. And they pop the clutch, get the engine turned over. <laughs> <laughs> the karate kid? Okay, pop it! <laughs> Daniel's outside pushing it. Um, no, when they get it started again and it starts to turn up, there is zero damage whatsoever. Yeah. All of this metal's bending and creak. Like, it should have been dented at some point. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that would have just been a cooler effect, but uh, I mean, not to mention the fact that you actually took fucking torpedo damage somewhere on board the ship. Yeah, and that's what I didn't get because the torpedo explodes like by the rudder, like in yeah. the back, by the like the whole propulsion system, which is why the mm -hmm. propulsion system stops working. But when it kicks back on, it's just like, that nah, we're good. There's not one little rudder that's bent or like, you know what I mean? It's, oh, yeah. Exactly. Everything's pristine. Here, several of Ramsey's officers decide that Hunter is unfit for command, so they plot this counter mutiny to free Ramsey. They persuade Weps, who's Hunter's like best friend, to join them, give them the key to the weapons locker, so they could take the sub back by force. And I, I would like to know if this was maybe an editing error, because. The sub is already ascending. They got they got yeah. the they got the uh, uh, engine started again, and they're climbing. So cool. Problem is solved. the 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 enemy submarine is gone. Damages have been addressed. You're climbing back up. Gandolfini says we've taken a hit, and it's bad. How bad is it, Mister Duggan? It's bad, sir. Yeah, the sub that was... Gone. Now, if they were still descending and Gandolfini rushed in there like that, cool, because you, you don't know what's happening. But this, well, and this, I this think... makes Gandolfini out to just be like, I don't give a fuck, I'm getting my fucking captain back. Yeah, I, and I'm trying to remember like the like how it, how it works. Like They could have decided, like this is what we're going to do mm -hmm. when it was going down. And then they go down and it starts to ascend. Like, it, it, it kind of all happens at the same time. You know what I mean? Right. So it, it was it, it, it was a little weird, but, like, I get it. But at the, at the end of the day, I don't get it. Because for me, and I, I have a bunch of buddies that have been in the military, it's just like, you follow protocol. Well, yeah, like, the, the, the deed is done. We're climbing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where the enemy combatant has already been destroyed. What's the point? Yeah, exactly. You know exactly. what? Like, what, so, it, what really is your like? We're firing those fucking missiles no matter what. 
And they even make it seem like at the end, too, like Gandolfini was really disappointed they didn't fire those missiles. Yeah, everybody's got a hard on for the nukes. Like everybody really wants to fly, everybody wants to fire some fucking nukes in this bitch. They they free Ramsey, who follows them to the bridge where they arrest Hunter, the other officers who helped him in the mutiny. And Ramsey assumes command and orders the launch to continue because obviously everybody's got the hard on for the nukes. Ravetti, who was in the fight earlier in the, the mess hall or whatever they call it on the sub, fights the guard, frees Hunter and the other arrested officers. They make their way back to the bridge to stop Ramsey from launching said nukes. And there's this is another really good scene of they're in like the weapons cabin mm -hmm. where Ramsey and Weps mm -hmm. kind of get kind of get into it. He needs to get the combination to get into the, the little safe or only thing I didn't like about it was. And I know everything's kind of amped up to 11 mm -hmm. at this point. I just don't see Ramsey like as a character taking out a gun and putting it up against crew members heads. Right. I get it. If you don't do it to webs, cause it's, you know, you're disobeying order. Technically, you can be shot for that in an, yes. in an extreme situation like yeah. they are in. Yeah. Fine. Just picking up the dude and being like, I'm going to blow your fucking buddy's head. Like, take that was a wild bunch. Like, you're not a criminal. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? You're not robbing a bank. Like, this yeah. isn't what you do. And yeah, that. I wish. Even if Ramsey did do that, like he's to his breaking point. Yeah. Right. I wish one of the other officers with Ramsey would have been like, sir, what are you doing? Yeah. And even him just being like, I'm sorry, son, you know, go back to your station. Yeah. And then turning his attention back to Weps. But Weps is so fucking wishy-washy as a character. Dude. That's his style. Weps Dude, can't I even decide who his friends are. Let I'm, alone what real protocol should be. Apparently I am Weps in this movie. <laughs> you are Weps in this movie. You are absolutely, I'm going to do this. Nah, this one sounds but Nah. Whoever doesn't have a gun pointed at my head, that's who I'm against. If, exactly. you're, if you have a gun on me, I'm on your team, buddy. Everybody comes face to face on the bridge. And Ramsey here punches Hunter in the face twice, demanding the missile key back. And Hunter takes that two-piece to the face like a motherfucking man. Like, oh, yeah. Like, listen, I get it. Gene Hackman's old and shit. Even in this movie, he's probably what? His mid 50s, roughly. Oh, he's got to be older than that uh, I, in this movie. I was, I was just, I was just trying to be nice. He's got to be in his you don't mid 50s, have to be. roughly. He's old as fuck in this movie. But I know old man, old man, uh, you got old man strength. Old man hits me in the face twice like Gene Hackman. Throws a punch here, I'm I'm folding I'm I'm folding like a fucking sack of bricks. Like, and what I like about this scene as well is the fact that Denzel doesn't hit him back because he's still the captain. Yes, he just fucking takes it. He knows if he hits him back, he's in the wrong. Denzel, this whole time is sticking to protocol. That's all he is trying yep. to do. Yep is just confirmed this fucking message. And again, I have to ask the question, what's the big deal? Especially when they sit down, because they come to the arrangement, right? That there's seven minutes until launch time. Gene Hackman says you have three minutes. They haven't been able to launch this whole fucking time. And you're raising this right. I'm like, we're firing our fucking, like, we can't even take a beat when you know we're out of danger. Yeah, You know they're not ready. You know our missiles have a four-minute window to still get there and fuck their shit up. Nah, full-on mutiny. I'm fucking jamming my finger on that trigger as hard as I fucking can. Like, my God, dude. Yeah. Like, at this point, seriously, like, at this point, Gene Hackman is gone. Bye-bye. We see that because the two sit in the command center. They're awaiting the EAM. While they do... Ramsey lights a cigar, brings up the, the, the subject of horses and stallions from Portugal, and they're awesome because they're white. Like, 
I didn't know there was a fucking clan rally that started in the goddamn bridge, but Ramsey's it like happen. it's the USS Alabama. <laughs> At some There's, point. There is a scheduled cross burning weekly. It's apparently. But like there's this whole and I get it because in the interview, like, you know, you there's in movies, you gotta bring shit back around and you know, yeah. I understand. But the way they did it here with in the interview, they talk about, you know, what do you like to do in your spare time? And Denzel says, I like yeah. to ride horses and yada yada, and what's the best horse you've ever ridden and all that. And then here they bring up horses again, but he's like you know why they're awesome? Because they're fucking white horses, you fucking bitch. Most highly trained horses in the world, they're all white. There was no he, reason for it. No, he ha he hasn't said or hinted or pretended that there's even a racist fucking bone in his body. Exactly. And and there probably is a cut scene or a deleted scene where old dude with the glasses on, where it's like the black dude and the white dude were the yeah. team. The black dude with the glass on goes, what the fuck did he just say? <laughs> and then just kind of shifts his gun over to his buddy. Like, if that's how we're going to start breaking shit up, we can break it up. But like, yeah, we can play that game if you'd like. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Kind of I don't know. In your mouth? <laughs> you people. I don't, I don't fucking understand. Collegiate mm -hmm. reports that the EAM transmitters fixed and... The new EAM is coming in. It's brought to the bridge and authenticated. And when it's authenticated, the message for the Alabama is to stand down, to cancel the launch of their missiles. Ramsey leaves the bridge. And then we cut to Pearl Harbor. And a general inquiry is called before the Pacific Fleet Admiral. And having reviewed the incident, he tells both Hunter and Ramsey they were both right. They were both wrong in their actions on the Alabama. And off the record, he tells both of them that they're that they've disrupted the traditional chain of command. The admiral then also announces that Ramsey's filed for his retirement, that they grant him, and Hunter is to be given a captain's commission aboard another submarine, and that he came highly recommended by Ramsey himself. And then we cut to outside of the Navy headquarters, and Ramsey tells Hunter that he was right about the horses being from Spain and not from Portugal. And they laugh. They salute each other and the movie. I absolutely loved the, the little courtroom scene. I think they did a fantastic job here of telling you exactly what the point of the movie is. <laughs> yes. Because if you're watching it, you're like, okay, like that was cool. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. It's kind of a wartime situation. It's kind of crazy. But at the end of the day, you're just kind of like, eh, okay. But them kind of announcing or telling you exactly how fucking befuddling this yeah. situation really is, it kind of puts it into perspective for a second. You're just like, oh, shit. And it also ties in the end a little bit where they both understand yeah, Ex extreme, extreme measures were taken. Yeah. But they both understand where the other person was coming from, especially coming from a fucking military tribunal that just told you both you're right and you're wrong. You were correct. It's not that scene is phenomenal to me. Yeah. And by the way, shout out to Jason Robards. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And dude, I'll be honest, I, I haven't seen this movie in a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I get this confused with that one movie with uh, Sean Connery, Hunt for Red October. Hunt for Red October. I get this confused with that all the time, just in my head. I, I forget, and I forgot before watching this how good this movie really is. Like, mm -hmm. did and you're the you're the expert. Like, hey, awards and things. I know Denzel didn't really win awards until training day. Right. How the I'll fuck? Glory. Yeah, glory. How the fuck did he not win anything for this? Nobody. He did. was, he was fant Everybody was fantastic in this fucking movie. Mm -hmm. Like, and again, I'm not one to gush over movies. 
And I, I enjoy military type movies. I'm the fucking history channel guy. I love all that shit. Mm -hmm. So when I see stuff like this, like if it's good, I'm, I'm dude, I'm in, I'm bought in emotionally and I'm good. I don't understand how nobody won anything for this. Yeah. Like this, is, uh... this whoever requested this, this was a, uh, uh, a PayPal request. Mm -hmm. Whoever requested this fucking two thumbs up. I haven't seen this in at least 20 years. And I love this to this day. It totally stands up. Like I, I love this movie. Oh yeah. This, uh, if, you don't think it stands the test of time. Turn on the fucking news. Because yeah. um, it 100% does. It's extremely relevant. Um, I love when movies and TV shows and books, especially books, really get into the technical and lean into the technical and stay with it. And they keep it as real as possible. Yeah. And I mean the jargon, the uniforms, the the actions of the characters. Absolutely. All, all of that shit is so important, especially if you know things about the military, if you understand how the real world military works and not like fucking Rambo. <laughs> then that is important when they're building these worlds. To tell yeah. this story. And I fucking love it. This this was like Tom Clancy. Speaking of A Hunt for Red October. It reminded me of a Tom Clancy style uh, story. Very, very smart. Very intelligent. Very fucking scary. To think yeah. about just. One, one of the. One of the myriad of problems. Yeah. In this fucking movie. Is totally available for your nightmares anytime you want it. Yes. But at the same time, the movie's fantastic. Everybody does a great job. Uh, if you take out the dog, the movie is perfect. And I'll tell yes. you right now, that's the reason nobody won anything for this movie. Because they went, they put a fucking <laughs> dog in it? <laughs> the fuck out of here. I don't, I don't know who put the dog in it, if it was the writers, if it was the director. Um, I will say this. So Tony Scott directed this. Mm -hmm. Just filming a a movie on a sub, mm -hmm. it's hard enough. Oh yeah, you You're know, because you're directing a play. Exactly, it's just this tiny confined space, and I get it, sets and things, but like. You don't have much. It's not like, oh, we're in Spain now, and then we're in New York right. City, and you're in this tiny little space. The, the job Tony Scott did with this movie was brilliant. <laughs> Fucking loved it. I loved every bit of it. Mm -hmm. Couple of things. The dog. Couple other little things um, I didn't like. But overall, this was fucking fantastic. Yes. But with that said... What movies do we have on deck, Corey? We got Saturday Night Fever, When Harry Met Sally, Life, Clerks, Toy Soldiers. Oh, and... my God. Pots and Pans. Yeah, I'm on Pots and Pans. Pots and Pans? What's Pots and Pans? Mm. Pots and Pans. I fucking love Toy Soldiers. I was just going to make sure for everybody. I think you just did that, though. I was... We're doing the Sean Astin movie, not the Eminem song. So don't get excited, <laughs> Stance, and like flop to the channel because you're going to be very disappointed. And uh, finally, Training Day. Danzel's popping up again. I love it. Can't wait to do Training Day. That's one of my favorite movies. Yes. So. Well, with that said, for Corey, I'm Armando. This is Kiss the Reviews, and this was 1995's Crimson Tide.